Cryptilians and crypto crackheads of the crypto YouTube world, for those who are sticking around, for those brave and strong people who are looking to create life changing wealth by sticking around in the bear market because you're not a moon boy who wants to be rich tomorrow or rich yesterday. This is your time. This is your moment. Let's get it. Turn it up to times two speed. Or if you're a non native English speaker, 1.5x, turn that sucker up on YouTube. I say that for your viewing, your viewing pleasure, initiation of timification. Here we go. <clears throat> Last week, I mentioned a couple times in my main points, or it might have been two weeks ago, that Wyckoff pattern accumulation pattern, specifically the accumulation pattern, number one and two, were playing out to the exact T, exact T, at this point here both are identical actually until about uh here or here depending on how you view it the difference either at this point or this point is that in accumulation pattern number one it makes the third and final low so as you can see here we have a monster dip a lower low and Wyckoff accumulation pattern number one has a third lower low. <clears throat> accumulation pattern two does not. It only has this low and it's identical to here when it comes back down. Then it just starts getting choppy. And then it starts. Uh, and then accumulation number two starts recovery. Accumulation one starts recovery after this dip and it comes up pretty fiercely and then takes off. So it looks like after this aggressive bounce here, I think it's more probable that either A, Wyckoff number two is playing out, or B, the Bitcoin cartel who are in it together to print these exact shapes to their wish, right? Getting rid of mass market psychology, which is why TA has been so difficult. It, I mean, it's been hard to make money in this uh, environment, right? Because it, it doesn't follow traditional trading rules. It actually is going against a lot of tra traditional trading rules as I got, I, you know, I got bit uh, in the ass by saying something about 90% probable trade and it went the exact opposite way. It was a horrible call, right? But it had a perfect track record. So it's very hard to make. Um, and that's the one I said I'm sorry about, right? That thumbnail said I messed up, right? But anyway, um, it's been very challenging to make money, especially when there's no volatility, Right. The, the ranges just aren't that big. So it looks like A, Wyckoff pattern, uh, accumulation pattern number two is playing, or B, they're just letting go of it at this point per my video yesterday. And if you had not seen, if you have not seen that video from yesterday, you might want to stop here, go watch it because this will make more sense. I went into off chain analytics and I made the bullish case, right? that if there is a bullish case, here's what it will be. And here are some hints that this will bottom out soon and start at least going into a relief rally. That might end up failing, but at least it'll get this much right. It'll hint towards that. <clears throat> and the main point in that was a uh, vi video from yesterday was that it looks like retail investors are sitting on a lot of stable coins on exchanges, unprecedented, unprecedented levels in specific terms of Bitcoin divided by stablecoin. The stablecoin ratio, the, denom the, the denominator is bigger than it's been uh, in the recorded history of that metric, I guess, at least on quant, uh, cri crypto quant. And it's at an all time low because the denominator is at an all time high. But the reason why I'm confident in saying that that is from retail investors is because the same off-chain analytics shows very clearly that retail is not bringing Bitcoin onto exchanges to sell. However, whales are bringing Bitcoin onto exchanges for whatever reason. There's a big divergence there. Retail has stablecoin. 
Whales have Bitcoin and probably some stable coins on there as well. So with that disparity or that divergence in retail versus this Bitcoin cartel or whales, which they're doing things lately, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. You just got to play their game. I'm not saying manipulation to the downside, right? Because honestly, it was manipulated to the upside too. This, I mean, honestly, uh, all of this F, so quick pause. All of this right here was manipulation. Whether you want to believe it or not, it was. This happened exactly at the day. So this 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 pump up was not from retail. And I'll show, I'll prove it to you here in a second. Or not prove it to you, but show you pretty indisputable evidence. As Bitcoin was making its last leg up to get people bullish before this dump, the massive, massive, massive dump that happened. Bitcoin wasn't charging up. It made a lower high. Cardano and Ethereum were pumped by the same group, right? So manipulation happens both ways. So I'm not, I don't want you to think that uh, I'm sitting here saying manipulation to the downside. No, 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 no. It, it goes both ways. So you simply have to play their game. So don't sit, think, uh, don't think things are unfair and this and that. All you need is volatility to make money. That's all you need. Okay. But recently, there hasn't been much volatility, uh, mostly due to this cartel uh, printing uh, price action uh, as they see fit. But other than that, I guess I will complain about manipulation to the side of non-volatility, but not to the downside, because it's happened both ways. All right. So if I can finish that tangent real quick before I jump back into Bitcoin here and the things to look out for. Um, so I have I've developed some uh, EMA ribbons here. And uh, I provide these on my uh, Patreon and they get things right a lot. But um, so what I'm doing here is I'm looking at during this massive move up, right? So I'm looking at that section. Look how the many corrections behave in terms of the line, uh, the different lines. Here it only went down to the green line, went down to the white line, went down to the white line, to the white line just... And then it only wicked down once before its final push up to create some bearish divergence on the four hour, a higher high. And it's only one strike of bearish divergence, which is kind of strange. Um, but this would have been your tip that it was going down, though, right there. Um, get, got stuck. The uh, RSI got stuck below and rejected by the uh, moving average, which is the white line. Um, but anyway, so you can see here how it's how it behaved with all these little circles here. OK, during this push up. And here's how I am very 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 certain that this was fabricated in manipulation to the upside step number one it started on april 25th bitcoin its last little push up to convince people the market's bullish before dumping what day do you think that started on april 25th the same day um and going back to ethereum in terms of where it dipped down to these lines, that big run, look, that doesn't happen ever. Look, so that, that was kind of uh, fishing out of, a, or it's crawling out of a, of a dip, so that doesn't count. But here, it goes down to the pink line, here to the pink line. Here, the ribbons actually flip, like halfway flip for a second. Here it comes all the way down. Here it comes all the way down. So the normal um, way up has the ribbons on the four hour both flip or crunch down and the wicks down hit the pink to the red almost every time and it's true no matter how far back you go you just keep going back and uh, hell just take off price look at the ribbons they flip and crunch all the time you don't just see massive massive runs actually how many days long was this run? that that could be 18 days that actually might be comparable Let's see here. Let's put price back on. So that, that's a pretty big run. But I bet price wicked down below here. Watch. So price did consolidate here without wicking down. So that is a little bit different. But then you had this massive wick down uh, before the move ended. And then you had this happen. Uh, the the, st the uh, ribbons uh, crunched down. Price went past it before the end. So it's still not the same even though that was a very bullish run that was a that was a massive massive run um but so you can see it this run from here to here just taking off price again from here to here see how many times these ribbons just like you know finagle around 
And then you go to recent price action to see that it was manipulation. This is straight up. This doesn't happen. That is not retail buyers. That is not mass market psychology. That is the same folks who were making money from shorting Bitcoin, right? At 58K roughly, 59K. They were getting people bullish to take on long so that those same people could take on shorts, right? Because they have to have people longing in order for them to short enough, right? So anyway, I got off on a tangent there, but uh, I wanted to make sure that you know that it's manipulation to both sides. So that was an important tangent. I didn't plan that. I apologize. But I, I actually, I don't apologize. That was a, that was decent information, I guess. Hopefully something you've heard on other channels. Hopefully. Um, but anyway, so with Bitcoin, here are the things to watch. I still maintain that the easiest way to figure out if this rally is going to sustain is by going to the four-hour chart on Bitcoin and only looking at the 89 EMA and maybe keep the 200 up there as well. I'll get rid of that triangle. Here's the battle line. It's the two week horizontal. And I've covered this in multiple videos. So you just go to the two week spreader out and you, you see all these lines here, right? So this is the very obvious battle line right now. The four hour 89 has been this essentially the ceiling, a major resistance point, which aligns pretty closely with the daily 10. So if I put on the daily 10 and draw it, it's going to be almost identical. So the daily 10, whatever. But it's nice to look at this on the four hour chart so you can see within the daily candles the chaos or the strength or the weakness that is happening within, right? As it's happening. So that's why I'm. Um, suggesting that y'all look at the four hour 89. But anyway, a squeeze play is about ready to happen. This is the battle line right here. If price can't get above this purple line, stuff's gonna tank. And what could happen is that this could be another failed rally. It gets above, gets rejected by this orange line like it did here, and then heads back down, pops back up, uses the purple as resistance and tanks. So I would say, the four hour chart, let that be your friend in regards to being nimble with your trades, especially if you're in a long trade, you need to know when to get out and you're going to be able to know by, by prices reaction to one or both of these lines. And honestly, it might be wise to take profits right at this because it's probably going to bounce, come back down and then charge through if it does actually break through. So taking profits at the four hour, uh, 200 EMAs. If it gets there, um, it's probably a good idea. That's what I'm personally going to do because at the end of last video, I took on a long after uh, three strikes of one hour bullish divergence, and I'm now in profit. I was in profit immediately, but then it uh, then price poked down a few percent. But I I did very I did really light leverage. I think I did it right here in the video. I got off and longed it right there. I was in profit. Then I was in a loss. So yeah, it went down one point one and a half percent, but I held on, and now I'm in profit. Not a monster profit. Um, but anyway, so if you're longs, you need to uh, look at Bitcoin's reaction to these lines or even to this battle line. Bitcoin could get rejected by this this two-week horizontal. It's been using it as support. It could use, and it used it as resistance here. So it just crashed through, used it as resistance, fell down, and then used it as support, and then used it as support. But this could be resistance and it could head down. So on the Ethereum chart though too, in order to be, if you're actively trading, you need to look at both Ethereum and Bitcoin. I'm telling you that right now. If you're not doing that, you're making a mistake. <clears throat> because over the last few days, Ethereum has been bringing Bitcoin down. Bitcoin had some pretty nice things going for it, at least to get you know a new local high, not quite as high as 40K, but let's say 36K, go back to Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin had some things going for it to uh, make a new daily high structure above here and ethereum just underperformed underperformed and it, it just seemed like it sucked bitcoin down and i covered that in my video yesterday as well so you need to be watching ethereum ethereum also has its own triangle i also made a best fit line not exactly to wix but you know where where a decent amount of price action happened here middle of this wick the actually the end of this wick marked uh is that nope not the end of that i just made a best fit line 
and it didn't quite nail uh, that perfectly. But um, but in terms, in specific terms of the battle line versus Bitcoin's battle line, Ethereum flew through its by eleven percent, and Bitcoin only fell through its battle line by four percent. So that's you know one piece of evidence that uh, that Ethereum is pulling Bitcoin down now. Ethereum has had a quite a strong reaction. So it looks like Ethereum might be done pulling Bitcoin down and the market might be starting to get volatile to the up direction. This is a good reaction, folks. This is a really good reaction so far. I might be fooling myself. Um, and we'll, we'll see if I'm fooling myself once Bitcoin and Ethereum both get to the four hour 89 and 200. So moving forward for the rest of this week and early next week, I think all eyes should be on those levels for both Ethereum and Bitcoin. And what you should be doing is judging Bitcoin's reaction and Ethereum price uh, reaction to these lines. Or if you want to make it slightly simpler, go to the daily. So you can do a couple things, but they're going to align pretty, pretty closely and might want to keep the 200. So keep on the 200 and the 10. So on Ethereum, you're also going to have a nasty squeeze play because this 10 is getting ready to squeeze price <laughs> below the 200, and that's bad. So you see that uh, Ethereum saved itself from having this uh, bearish cross here. See that? So it looks like Ethereum might save itself yet again from this bearish cross right there. It looks like it's working to avoid it. Bitcoin is far past that point. I mean, Bitcoin's 10 has been under its uh, 200 on the daily for quite some time. So there, so the squeeze play uh, on Bitcoin is actually on the two-day. But I wouldn't be watching that because the 4-hour 89 is roughly the same as this 10. Um, is roughly the same as that 10. So Bitcoin's got a nasty squeeze play as well. But anyway, to make things easy, if you see Bitcoin close some dailies above this uh, this red line, the daily 10 EMA, and if you don't know how to set that up, look in my library uh, videos in both the description section and in my playlist. It's called library. I teach you how to do set these up just like me. You need to see closures above that red line. And that will be congruent roughly to Bitcoin getting above the 4-hour 10 EMA. And you need to see some closures. Like, like can't not, not fly past. You don't want it to fly past. Because that means it's probably going to get rejected and come back down. Perhaps even farther. You want to see some, you want to see uh, some good price action like this, or perhaps it flies up to only here, and then comes back down and rests on that 10 EMA. So one of those two cases is what you want to see if you want price to recover. On Ethereum, nearly the same thing. You want price either to creep up and start closing with very low volatility above and or at the line. So some below, some above, but always right at. And not all below. Hopefully not all below. Even though sometimes all below would uh it, it, it charges up. But you want to see Ethereum do roughly the same thing and hopefully not fly past this uh local high here. You want to see it come up, get rejected, come back down, base one more time, and then pop up. Or once again on this 10 EMA, you want to see low volatility price close above at around the, the daily 10 EMA, and then it has a likely probability to fly past this and uh, go on some type of rally. Perhaps not the rally that continues the bull market. I'm not saying that. I would actually guess it's going to be a relief rally um, on, on Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, and then price will come down either to, let's say, about that level there, so around 40, or this point of control about here, retest the monthly 10, or retest this battle line, or make new lows. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm definitely selling into this rally if, if the rally gets above the daily 200 EMA. I will definitely start selling in this box right here, and my box that I have drawn is between 43K and 50K, and specifically what I'll be doing is the positions that I have open or altcoins or whatever I'm holding, regardless of being a profit or not, doesn't matter. I will probably do something like put limit sell orders um, respective to Bitcoin, though. Uh, like, let's say sell 50% of what I have in the middle 
10% here and here, 15%, 15%, you know, so on and so forth, like a middle heavy distribution. And that would be my plan. And if Bitcoin comes up to here, doesn't quite get my limit sells here and starts heading back down, I'll just market sell into that. It, it's still hopefully within the box if I see it petering out before it gets to the middle zone, which would be about 46.5, 46K roughly. So what I just said was more of your midterm um, mid idea. And the immediate idea, I've covered that pretty much the entire video, so hopefully I've made my point clear about what you need to be seeing, what signs you need to see, and all that jazz. Um, and then more mid-long term, what I personally am looking for is, and it's regardless of, of Bitcoin crashing down to 20K or not, that's irrelevant to me in terms of time frame. I'm looking for Bitcoin by November, December to be up in this box, maybe under here, but over that point, I want it to be in this box here. And I'm gonna keep this here, how about that? I'm thinking Bitcoin will be here before February 1st. And I think Bitcoin will make all-time highs in February 1st. So, and let's see how this prediction pans out. Who knows, it'll potentially be awful prediction because it's really hard to make money in this market. So this is my sell point. And if you want to see how I did my sell point, um, I'm on the daily chart. All I did was look for wicks and candle bodies over here uh, with this main structure. And I see, uh, for example, I see wicks down, wick down, wick down. And so, okay, well, the box has got to be somewhere between there. And then so I chose this wick right there and this uh, this wick right here with that wick there for the bottom. And that kind of embodies the uh, support zone of all of this Wyckoff crap that was happening up there. The false sense of bullishness, which I was calling out over and over and over for <laughs> the whole month of March and April, but uh, I got fooled. I got fooled by that dip mixed with the length of um sideways action and i and and ethereum getting bullish here it, it did fool me but anyway this was um all a setup right but anyway it's still a setup it's still a structure and i think this will be hard to get past especially this top line and i think bitcoin will be in this uh above that box by uh before february 1st so this video covered a short-term, a mid-term, and long-term analysis of what I think is likely to happen. I don't think that anything has an 80% glaring obvious chance to happen. I don't want you to you know, bet the house on anything I've said. So this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. These are the things I'm seeing in the charts. And if the charts tell me to change what I'm thinking, I will change what I'm thinking instantly. So don't be scared to do that. And I see a lot of people say, you just got to pick one thing. Actually, no, you don't. No, you don't. That's a horrible, um, that's a horrible method <laughs> to try to be in crypto. You pick like five things and then you try to play the most probable until it doesn't work out, then flip to this, you know, the next most probable after the first one doesn't uh, work out. That's what you do. And you need to be aware of the multiple most likely uh, scenarios. So anyway, that's my little rant at the end. Everybody loves Cardano. Y'all just got timified.